Welcome everyone to the Kasaki region. Well, at least a filler video just to kind of get everyone acquainted and started on this region, I guess. My name is Yoku, or more like I'm adapting that persona for now um, as kind of my avatar on this channel. Um, it's actually a character that I've designed that wasn't intentionally meant to look like me, but apparently really looks or resembles me, it gives me gives up people the vibe of me. Um, but Yoku is going to be a character who is a side character or semi-rival character that is actually the assistant researcher of the region's um, professor. That being said, we don't really need to delve into that too much just yet, because this video is more about the starter, and we're going to be talking about one of the starters of the trio, and it's uh, first stage and go into a lot of details about its background, its inspirations, mythologies and such and also the process uh, and just visual design aspects of things. Um, that being said, I also wanted to use this video as a jumping point to kind of mention about, introduce you to the region essentially, talk about roughly what inspired this region and how it developed a little bit more and uh, what are the things that I use to kind of tie the themes together what are the themes and such because uh, if you've watched the first video on the channel basically what I was hoping to do in this channel initially was I just wanted to draw some starters like everyone else and for me Recording the drawing process is a little bit hard because sometimes I just, you know, the inspiration hits and you're not ready to set everything up and also just sometimes you draw and it, you're not happy with it and you end up with all these footage of things that you don't actually want and then the one you actually like was the one that you didn't record. Either way, so I thought that's probably not what I'm gonna do. So I was like, it'd be more interesting actually to go a slightly different route and present it more like as if it was an in-game cutscene or in-game footage uh, some sort of like story thing so I was kind of adapting a lot of story uh, game footage and that kind of mechanics to tell a story essentially and it would act as a video that showcases the designs but after that when I was jumping into my second region I started developing a bit of a story in my mind and then I was thinking oh I could do this I could do that and these characters are so good I want to like showcase them more and then all of a sudden it kind of turned into more characters more um, stories themes laws and I was like I gotta do this but I do have a full-time job and very very little limited time off um, so you know drawing is kind of like a secondary hobby with um, limited skills I'm trying to improve on that as well um, so it just takes a long time and references and a lot of work to even get one or two images done so you know I'm not doing this professionally so uh, just be patient and uh, know that I'm trying and also because one person doing this kind of video which usually should be divided between a few people really will take like months. Um, I've already been working on this uh, region for probably I think over a month already and I've got a bunch of designs of the characters, uh, starters and storyline development, jotting down notes and just yesterday I was writing up all these um, t like to make the details official for uh, my starters, like their typing uh, abilities and sort of things that I've already thought about but haven't really actually sat down and written it down. So stuff like that. So this video is essentially kind of a jumping off point to introduce you guys and also act like as a sort of buffering video, like filler video to keep you interested and get you guys excited if you're watching this. So let's not waste too much time. Um, Let's talk loosely about the inspiration. So right after the first video, I was like, all right, what's the next um, trio going to be like? Um, what is going to be my inspiration? What will be really interesting? Like, what's going to get me excited? And I thought, you know what I eat a lot of? One, I love dessert and sweets and I love baking. You know, it's dessert is what got me into baking and what got me interested and the fact that you can do it. It's kind of like... Um, when you're not a green thumb and you want to raise plants and 
you just somehow can't stop killing them but then one day you suddenly figure out how to keep one of them alive and it's suddenly you're just kind of hooked it's like that kind of feeling if you know what i'm saying um so that was one big thing and the other thing is fast food i eat a lot of fast food uh definitely more than i should and also each time i eat a lot um, i've been told that a lot um so mcdonald's is one of my favorites that i go visit a lot not a sponsor um and i eat a lot of like variations of like the combinations of meals but i thought that would be a great point to start off i just looking at that that was the first thing i was looking at and i was like let's just start design let's start drawing i started drawing on paper and i started designing the three starters and working out a base trio of inspiration i divided into one starter it should be the sunday because of ugh, it's sunday um that was the loose idea. The second one was fries. I mean, got to have the fries, man. <laughs> fries are so good, especially when they're nice and hot and really well seasoned. Ooh. And then the third one, of course, I was tossing up between the burger and the nuggets. But nuggets as a Pokemon was not giving me vibes at the time so i was like i think burgers will probably have more features to work with so let's just start with something easy considering i have to design three of them and at the time i didn't even think that i was going to be de designing the entire line but because of the storyline kind of coming in later and having the idea of evolution for some of them i actually did start designing and i think i'm going to end up designing all three full line evolutions so six pokemon in total um at them oh wait no what am i saying god I'm, I'm terrible with maths nine pokemon in general with the three stages for each three uh so far the first one that we will be talking about it already has its full line designed and i'm pretty much i'd say like 90 percent happy with it to say the least and the second line is uh the second uh tree of the trio is starting to get designed as well the third trio i think is just kind of the hardest so i'm gonna reserve that one for much later and we will talk about that i guess more focused in another video anyway so that was that was the uh, original inspiration and we will talk more about how i like started designing that starter in this video and also visual um, inspirations and what kind of things did i add for what reason and where are they in the design um, all that kind of stuff now i thought because I was going to be naming this region um, after a lot of the, like I wanted it to be heavily focused on a lot of the sweet treats that I have memories of when I was growing up. And a lot of it was um, eaten in Taiwan, which where my family is from. And actually I didn't realize until I was older when I was looking into these uh, treats or getting to know them a bit more, or maybe looking up how to make them myself. Um, I found a lot of these treats were imported treats. They were all from Japan. And not only that, they have pretty interesting backgrounds. That's more like a side information. But I wanted the name as one of the things that, um, while I was designing the starters, I was thinking, okay, I should, I definitely need a name for a region. I'm going to use that in a video. Um, so I tried to start designing that as well. So the name actually is Kasaki Region. Kasaki comes from the combination of Castella and Nagasaki. So Nagasaki, obviously the place, um, it's actually the place where the sweet treat or cake um, or confectionery, or whatever you want to call it, um, called Castella is a specialty of. And it has a very long history. The Castella cake is this kind of long rectangular cake uh, with sort of like a dark soft crust on top and then a really spongy bouncy kind of texture um, cake um, it's not really quite like angel fruit it's a little bit more sturdy but has a really bouncy texture unlike many other cakes um, and usually has a very uh, i think one of the most popular ones that we get in taiwan is a honey flavored one so it's just this very gentle um, honey flavor and it's, it's just a really lovely cake to have for afternoon. You just, you know, once you start snacking, you kind of keep slicing and eating more. Um, but this cake is quite interesting because it's actually not a Japanese cake per se. 
Um, it was actually originally bought over by Portuguese merchants in the 16th century. And I guess ever since then they've kind of held on to it and developed it a lot more and adapted it. Um, I'm pretty sure there are the recipes for the Portuguese version and the main thing that I would say that might have changed, but don't quote me on this, is probably the texture has become more and more sort of bouncy and that mochi mochi texture which Japanese people tend to enjoy, uh, which is also what I really enjoy about it. Um, it's also very interesting, it's a cake um, that uses uh, flour that is usually uh, bread flour with like higher gluten basically um, to kind of give it a little bit more of that stronger bouncy texture um, which is not always that usually uh, not always that common with cakes usually you would try to like reduce the gluten or try to get a lot of like air into it which this cake does but you know anyway I digress like I said I like my desserts so that was pretty much the simple origin of the name Kasaki of the region now, I already mentioned the trio's uh, inspiration was my first initial idea of let's just do snack, fast food. Uh, fast food, cafes, those are very big parts of like Japanese culture, like food culture as well. Um, and I wanted to expand more. I was like thinking, what else can I include? I could do things like street food, uh, Japanese items like bomkuhan, which is a uh, German cake another cake with like a different cultural influence um, but has come to stay daifuku mochi and then I thought you know what wagashi I've never drawn anything or designed anything obviously with wagashi before but wagashi is just so full of potential it's a very traditional uh, confectionery made by very few skilled um, I wouldn't know what to call them pastry chefs I suppose um, uh, or masters of the art, their art I guess but they are confections that are usually I think heavily influenced by um, seasons and uh, they're kind of more like bean paste um, desserts I guess uh, molded with like different kind of bean paste traditionally um, but they are like multiple kind of layers and different ingredients to them so that's kind of just one of the versions but if you look it up they would have a lot of different shapes and forms and colors pastel very very pretty to look at just alone like a lot of design cakes basically so I really wanted to incorporate that as well um, and I thought well I probably won't be using Wagashi a lot in a Sunday because while I designed the Sunday as my first Pokemon of the three trio um, I don't really want to include something that wouldn't be included in a Sunday. I wanted it to not look tacky, but I wanted it to have all the kind of tacky, like very um, on the spot, uh, nostalgic, common things that will go into a buffet or Sunday. So that was the idea because uh, of like the street food and cafe uh, buffets and stuff or crepe food. Like I was like, okay, I'm gonna mush like all that into the Sunday um, category and just uh, pack them in because you know I want to include as many sort of features as possible. Not so much to like overcrowd the design, but just to make it more interesting and uh, yeah, just like to give it multiple layers, I guess. So that's kind of like what it was and then um, I think fashion became a big part as well when I started designing the human characters so um, yeah anyway so uh, fashion is kind of a big part as well uh, basically uh, I was kind of inspired for the uh, protagonist which is actually a girl that I designed um, she is her, her basically her um, appearance like the way she dresses uh, her fashion is pretty much inspired by Tokyo fashion especially from a video by uh, Sophia Nygaard if you haven't seen that one um, I pretty much took it off straight off from the design of one of the character uh, one of the um, uh, outfits that she was um, looking at um, in the video and I thought it would just bring a really cool um, vibe to the character and it just suited the character really well and really brought the character to life. 
the other thing I really wanted to do, which was also a big part of my, I think we were looking into that nostalgic thing. Um, a big part of nostalgia was also reading manga when I was growing up, and one of the manga I really loved was one about uh, a teacher of a high school, high school, primary school, uh, teacher of a primary school, I think, or high school. I can't remember, but you know, kids are kind of hard to define in the manga um but anyway uh he, there was a lot of uh the whole story around around him pretty much like solving cases and helping the kids with, with like possess possessions um yokai bakemono deities all sorts things around the um what's it called uh the what's the word i'm looking for spiritual no um things around the stuff like that let's just put it that way um anyway so it was a story all about that and it was really cool and really got like me uh if you're not from japan or know that much about the law or the mythology it really introduces you to pretty much like as many as probably some people might even know um even like to introduce you to so many that maybe you might even end up knowing a bit more of like ones that Japanese people don't even talk about that much. Anyway, so I really wanted to look into laws and include that because, you know, that's kind of what a lot of Pokemon designs often had, especially in the Japanese regions, like the ones with uh, Yukimono, um, uh, Yukiona, I should say. Uh, Yukiona um, was obviously one of the designs they used in one of the earlier generations. Um, things like that so that was kind of another jumping point so fashion food and uh, myths and laws were the, pretty much the four main thing themes that I'm pretty much tying the region together with and using as sort of the main inspiration for design as well um, the main thing that I want to mention before we jump into the starter I know it's a lot of stuff that I just talked about uh, just bear with me a bit longer but I think this is very important before we start talking about why food? And how the hell are you going to talk about food in relation to the region? Like, how is food... Like, how did Pokemon become, like, food? Are they, like, actual food turning into Pokemon? Like, can you eat them? Like, is, how is this going to work if this was, like, a, let's say, a canon game? Well, that was something I obviously considered pretty much from the start as well. So I started considering the lore behind the whole region and how it would all make sense. So it starts with the legendary Pokemon. So the legendary Pokemon, I decided I would have wanted to be obviously something very important, something with deep tradition, culture and roots. So thinking about those things, I was like, what better thing to use to design other than Wagashi? So Wagashi was pretty much the biggest influence for designing the legendary but we'll talk more about that when I showcase that as a video on its own and that Pokemon basically is a Pokemon that uh, has a spawning has like its own uh, law or yeah I guess it's it's one that has its own law of how it came to be but that one doesn't get talked about till much later into the video series um, but basically there is this Pokemon that is native to this region, Kasaki. It was, it's basically, it has a sort of a fruit flower crown theme. And what it does is it flutters around, it's a little elusive, and it loves food. It just loves all forms of food. And it would go around, and especially with like banquets and stuff, it loves to come out and pick out a food that it likes. and. As it eats more and more every day, it would store up energy in its body and it would be fed into the crown. And after about every 50 years, the crown stores up enough, enough energy that it would be able to actually turn a selected food item into a new species of Pokemon. So it's essentially breathing life into food, which is funny enough. Um, so that is pretty much the main, uh, that's pretty much the legendary's um, twist, uh, loosely put. The trios are basically a result of that, or well, one of the incidences of that. And also, I should probably mention, just uh, the legendary Pokemon also has the Tashiki Warashi influences. Um, I wanted like a really cutesy 
a uh, very genuine and joyful kind of vibe, uh, but slightly elusive, but um, people pray to. Uh, it has almost like a deity. I want to say God, but to be honest, it's more like a deity, a deity um, influence. Uh, where people kind of like pray to like food gods or like for good luck in the kitchen or in the hospitality service um, They have that kind of respect, but it's not really quite like a religion of God um, Or some form of something in that manner um, So and if you don't know Zashiki Watashi is uh, loosely put it's kind of a spirit It's a very lucky spirit uh, from a child. Uh, there's a lot of different sort of versions of stories of how She came to be but I think it mostly is on a sort of a slightly tragic side, but she's meant to be uh, a child spirit that is very very um, kind and if you offer them the food that it's like or like set up a shrine in like a room um, Basically, if Toshiki Warashi visits a house, it is said to bring you good fortune. So, that was one of the things I really kind of want to incorporate a little bit of that vibe into. Um, essentially, I guess, more like the character and personality rather than just the design itself. There's also going to be a few other sort of laws that tie in the legendaries, which initially I just designed the first one, but actually I turned very quickly as the story kind of developed into three legendaries, which makes sense for Pokemon region. Actually, that's a pretty standard amount. Uh, the three legendaries uh, kind of have very, very strong ties to how they became or came to be. Um, and uh, it's going to be sort of revolving around a food god, god of the star, and sort of the aftermath of the birth of the Pokemon universe, which we have like a story of uh, that is official um, in the Pokemon universe, but I wanted to sort of add in sort of the influence of the universe being born uh, aftermath and like the events that came after that would kind of be part of the setup of this region story. All right, so let's jump into what you've really been waiting for and sorry about all that rambling. And luckily I'm just covering one starter and it's a base form. Otherwise I think this video would go on forever. So obviously you would probably be able to tell when you see these starters. Um, they are not your standard fire, uh, water and grass trio. Um, I'm trying to steer away from that and only do that maybe much later on because to be honest it's 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 a trio that there's just so many people doing already and it's kind of the most common one and you're kind of competing with not only the official Pokemon games but also all these other designers and artists um, with amazing designs so I kind of just like didn't want that competition and just also wanted Try something different it's just more fun and interesting and you'll find you'll probably be less sort of likely to kind of get influence and copy too much from other people like th things that you see and go that's great i wish i could do something like that stuff like that anyway so i wanted somewhat of a trio with like influences against each other um you know like one's weaker than the other and while strong against the other that kind of like combination some of the traits I do want to um, hold on to as much as possible um, but all in all this is uh, an unusual uh, trio combination I would say so the one we're gonna start uh, talking about is the first one that I designed so when I was first designing I was like all right parfaits I'm gonna think Sunday parfaits ice cream soft serve that could probably be put on an animal, obviously, which is kind of what a lot of Pokemon are based off of. And I was like, what kind of animal would be good for this? Well, if we're talking about a famous animal uh, in Japan, much like the queen and the corgi, I guess in Japan, we have Shiba Inus. Yes, the Doge. So with the Shiba Inu in mind, I was like, all right, that's amazing, Shiba Inu, they're happy, they're smiley, they're super iconic. And then Japanese parfaits and anime is like drawings, they're just delicious and have so many components, they're so elaborate and 
you know, there's really a lot to work with, especially if we want to do a line of uh, three stages. So the first one that we, uh, the first one that I design is called Pawu. So uh, in the story of this region, uh, in the story video, basically he would hatch from an egg uh, after being transformed by the powers of the legendary um, from a soft serve, so to speak, a Sunday. Um, and it would be at level one. So it is incredibly weak compared to your standard um, starters levels in the normal games. Uh, its name, Pawu, is derived from a uh, portmanteau uh, or merging of Paku Paku, which is sort of the munch munch sound that you make when you're eating food, especially usually kind of quickly because like, you know, puppy dogs, which is kind of the inspiration a puppy Shiba Inu, I imagine like most puppy dogs, would pretty much wolf down their food as soon as they can. Um, well, to be honest, most adult dogs probably do that too already. Um, or the opening and closing gaping of your mouth as in like kind of surprised or shock kind of look um, which I thought also works with its personality which we'll talk about in a bit and Wu is just Wu as in like woofing of the dogs um, especially puppies tend to do really cute ones which are not very intimidating and often not very successful kind of like owl you know whimpering kind of woofs so I thought Pa Wu really fits that kind of vibe of the character. Um, a very young puppy, um, soft serve dog with a, sort of a more easy to surprise kind of um, nature and um, with the influences of the food. So because I wanted uh, the region to revolve around food so much, I thought uh, an um, Onomatopoeia is from Japan. There's a lot of onomatopoeia sound um, words for eating food or food related sounds or textual descriptions of like the way foods sound when you eat them. So Paku Paku was kind of a good place to start. Kind of one of the ones that you always hear in a lot of anime and manga. Um, and so that's pretty much how, how Pawu the name came to be. Now in terms of designing the Pokemon, um, the basis obviously was I started with the shape of the Shiba Inu and I knew it was going to be dominantly the color of the common Shiba Inu, kind of like a uh, amber brown, red brown kind of like hue. Um, I thought the ears would be perfect for a waffle because a lot of Sunday soft serves, all that kind of stuff, have uh, have waffle cones or pieces of waffle stuck into it as garnish. So I thought waffle would be a very big part that is recognizable as Sundays and desserts of sorts. Um, so that was going to be the ears. And as I was designing, I was like, I think chocolate swelled. Um, what do you call those? It's like the wafer straws of um, chocolate biscuits, those with like the very sort of um, iconic chocolate brown and cream white um, swells is probably something that I should definitely include as well and I really wanted to work that into the design. As I was designing it though I knew that it wasn't going to work it wasn't aesthetically very pleasing to do some sort of soft serve with just like a straw sticking out of it and it was kind of a bit too straightforward. So it was a little lazy as a design, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So as I was designing, I needed to start thinking, I know when you're designing the starters, you want to think about its personality of the trio, which tend to be like a cool one, a joyful and sort of like a loof one and then probably one that's a little bit more scared and skittish um this one was definitely going to be that puppy vibe it's open to people it's easy to get along with it's kind of easy to forget scary things and more courageous that kind of that kind of vibe and just loyal um and fun to be around and just all around cute and melts your heart so i thought you know what also goes on a lot of Sundays and things like, um, you know, banana splits, sprinkles, 
sprinkles 100% has to be part of it. So I looked up sprinkles and kind of worked in, just broke it down to the three main colors that were used predominantly. And it was yellow, uh, aqua blue, and that kind of pastel pink. So those were the three colors that I found very aesthetically, especially against the um, red brown of the Shiba Inu design. I thought that was exactly what was needed to kind of bring this Pokemon to life so that it wasn't just kind of like a dog with a swell on its back. And the soft serve, as I was designing soft serve, I was thinking, all right, I wanted that fairy type typing to come through because um, I knew this one was going to be a fairy type straight away based on the food that it was. I thought when you look into things like parfaits, they have this, to be honest, we know it's like that's why a lot of dessert Pokemon so far have been fairy or dragon because they have that kind of very mythical and um, mysterious and, well, not mysterious, mythical and very sort of um, wowing vibe to it, I guess. Um, I'm not really sure how to describe it, but you know what I'm saying. So I knew it was going to be a fairy type straight away while when I was designing it. And that cutesy nature with like a mysterious kind of spirit monster like i wanted all that for this pokemon so when i was designing the soft serve i was like all right i want a soft serve and i knew it's going to be sort of like between the flavors chocolate probably just too much brown i wanted something that really added to the character so i was like left with maybe like uh, unusual color something artificial or more like strawberry pink pastel pink um or vanilla vanilla white cream white that kind of color to be honest, that would probably make it look very sort of ordinary again because it's just all the same kind of palette. And also that kind of is already the palette of, um, what's it called? Um, escapes some mind suddenly, but um, the cream Pokemon, Alcrimi. Um, yeah, it's the line is pretty much already dominating that color scheme. So, and that scheme is used a lot. So I'm like, okay, let's just try to do something slightly more, uh, fairy type but slightly not that color <laughs> in terms of food wise so i ended up picking the pink and adding a little bit of that cream white so it wasn't just like harsh pink and it turned out really nice it was very soft very velvety and as i was designing i also wanted to think about what do these food turn into when they turn into Pokemon? Like what part of the body in terms of the anatomy and what does it do? Um, how do they use it as part of like, you know, like think about like Bulbasaur, the seed on its back. It's a big part of its evolution. It opens up as it goes um, through evolution, finally turning into the plant or the flower. Um, so my idea that I came up with was, you know what? It could be, um, I thought it could basically be a part of its tail because the Shiba Inu didn't really have a visible tail. So I thought that could be basically a massive tuft of like soft, silky, really soft and cuddly fur, uh, tuft of fur or well, tail on its back. Um, basically a fur-like growth of sorts. And it has a slightly cooling effect when you touch it but it's very, very soft, fluffy, and silky. Um, I thought that was a very interesting sort of uh, feature for the Pokemon. Um, like a lot of Pokemon, some of the features are kind of strange or don't really make sense. Sometimes just kind of downright bizarre. Um, I think this one works pretty well um, as a design that could be official. Um, to work with that fluffy design and to make it more like huggable, that's where I incorporated, I tested out a few ways to incorporate the um, chocolate wafers straws and um, ended up putting them into the arm because I thought that would make it a little bit more interesting as a design rather than just having like the normal dog aesthetics. Um, if you look into say when I was referencing I was also looking at some of the dog designs and we have like um, the rock rough and you can tell that even though it has an overall more like a puppy kind of aesthetic it does have like very specific areas of design where it really enhances and focuses on its elements or uh, typing so fluffy was one of the things i really going for and pastel colors that highlight but not dominate like the entire like main body scheme was another thing that i was going for 
and obviously key elements of parfait uh, garnishes. So it's essentially Shiba Inu, parfait garnishes. Those were the three things I worked with. Um, and I ended up with like the sort of cloudy, puffy sort of furs on its arms or four, four, four legs, I should say. So that was for that part. And then the final thing that really brought the Pokemon together that gave it the finishing touch that I thought it really needed when I was thinking it was just missing a little something more is the substitute doll. Now, if you don't know about the substitute doll, the little green beast that became, I guess, like it came, it came in one of the generations um, when Whimsicott um, was probably the first one to make it iconic. Um, so much so that the Japanese name um, is based on basically it's basically translated it means uh, Whimsicott's substitute doll um, that's what the doll is called now um, I guess officially uh, so it's the little green kaiju kind of little doll um, that you see a lot now when any Pokemon use substitute that's kind of what the form that it takes so I thought it would be really cool if I added that as a garnish and not only that this little thing on the soft serve part which is like the rare and tough of uh, fur it's basically dogs shed and as the dog is shedding every day it accumulates and it basically creates these little doll like structures on its uh, rare and fur and what it does is it will be able to drop it and use it as a decoy um, when it's trying to get away when it's young and scared that was kind of like the basic idea at the time so that is basically the way i came up with the design and you can tell it's very i think i'm very very happy with the design and the eye color i wanted that kind of like i noticed a lot of like cute dogs have like that kind of very whitish kind of area around their face which kind of just I don't know for me it's a very cute part of dogs especially ones with like sort of darker brown or these kind of like darker shade hair colors it's kind of like I guess the best way to describe the feeling is you know cats or dogs with white paws like white socks on black bodies things like that those so cute so that was kind of the way I designed the eyes um, yeah and to make it a little bit more like sort of mischievous and a little bit like playful i gave it those little like dog fangs uh the little canines just sticking out and like a nice pink and big nose for the booping which is just essential for every puppy um yeah anyway that's enough gushing about that pokemon so that is pawu and let's look into the dex entry for pawu so for Pawu, Pawu is the Sunday Pokemon. Pawu are loyal, playful, and forgiving in nature. The dessert-like swell of fluff on its back is incredibly light and slightly cool to the touch, making them incredibly agile. As the fluff sheds non-stop, they form little substitute dolls that can be ejected as a decoy to allow them time to escape. While a young and inexperienced Pawu may, be, uh, may have the tendency while a young and inexperienced Pawu may have the tendency to make a run, they are known to rise to the occasion when backed into a corner. Now let's talk ability. So its standard ability or regular ability is called Sweet Treat. Um, as before mentioned, it's the soft cool fluff on its rare glows, uh, grows and ejects a substitute doll looking decoy with an irresistible sweet aroma. <clears throat> So let's talk about its ability. Its regular ability is Sweet Treat. Uh, the Sweet Treat is basically the soft, cool fluff on its rare grows and ejects a substitute doll looking decoy with an irresistible sweet aroma. This allows the Pokemon to flee battle without fail or lower the evasiveness of the foe depending on if they're trying to get away from the battle or if they're in the battle and actually confronting the foe. Because this is going to be in a story style video eventually, I also wanted to consider what kind of move 
um, moves that the, that Pawu would be learning as it grows and uh, that's potentially like what moves it's going to be keeping in its four slots. So starting from a baby at level one I thought I would give him three moves and one of them had to be at least one of them had to be a basic very basic attacking move of sorts um, and I wanted to add a move that was uh, that made sense because of its very typing, but not very strong because at the beginning it's pretty much supposed to be uh, Overwhelmed by its uh, foe so it's by its opponent so um, It couldn't be very strong and it is after all just a level one starter and not many level one starters are strong Most level five starters at the beginning of the games also have very limited move sets and often don't actually learn any of their elemental type moves till they're probably level six or seven. <clears throat> and the third mood uh, move I added uh, because I thought it would make a lot of sense considering its design and also its um, uh, ability. So it would be one of the things that I think if it was in a game and I, I would go, why doesn't it learn the move like that? Because it literally screams, I would probably learn a move like that. So I was thinking at the beginning when it's just hatched, basically its moveset is going to be uh, baby doll eyes, which is a very tight move, and that would be helping it to lower its opponent's abilities uh, uh, to attack him. And it would obviously know tackle, which is its attacking move, very basic but very common amongst pretty much a lot of um, fairy Pokemon uh, that don't use pound um, I just thought like the charging kind of running towards people and the zoom zooms of like dogs and puppies tackle made a lot more sense and baby doll eyes is because of the puppy eyes and so I thought that made perfect sense in terms of a fairy move but also it matches its characteristics as a dog and thirdly substitute because its ability sweet treat and also just that that is what it does with its back fluff um, it's able to help it escape especially at a young age this pokemon at stage one is very much sort of about being able to flee battles or situations quickly if it deems that it cannot win um, unless it's backed into a corner so hence why the substitute move and then as it gets starts to go on its journey and starts to train a little bit later and become stronger um, I would give it some additional moves and take away I think probably likely substitute or baby doll eyes so it would probably keep tackle and then either baby doll eyes or substitute and then it would learn the two additional moves bite and draining kiss um, as for those two, I think it's fairly exp uh, self-explanatory bite because dogs, you know, nibble and bite. Um, it does move that really much makes sense and adds a little bit diversity um, to the starter's move pool. Uh, draining kiss because uh, I want uh, the fairy type move. I wanted the uh, I wanted Pawu to basically be able to before hitting stage two at least have one move of uh, fairy type that can do damage but is on the sort of low to medium sort of base power stats um, just also for like story purposes so that in battle combat with like uh, battling another trainer or gym leader if I were to do a story like that um, it would look a little bit more interesting than sort of seeing it just run around and bite or substitute and run away that kind of stuff um, so I thought this would be a very good and believable um, starter stage one move pool, let's say, um, or move set. So that's it. I'm so sorry for such a long ramble and such a long video. Um, and this is this is Pawu. This is our fairy type starter, the Sunday Pokemon. So let me know what you think and. What do you think it's going to evolve into? Like, what do you think its characteristics are going to be based on this design for its final form? I have 
I had really good ideas for this Pokemon and it's already fully designed so expect the video to come up shortly um, very soon uh, that talks about its second stage and middle stage. I'm not sure if I should be sharing them real soon or should I be like revealing them only in like the video but I think maybe it's good to just share the design because it gets people interested in the story mode would act more like um, the official showcasing of them in like uh, its natural state like actually moving well not moving because I won't be animating them but um, sort of like what it does and how it blends into like the actual sort of society um, in like its relations and reactions with characters its interactions and such so I guess it's probably not a bad idea. What do you guys think? Do you guys prefer to kind of see like a more breakdown of the Pokemon after it's made its first like appearance in a video or should I just throw in these uh, Dex entry kind of uh, breakdown videos um, before the videos come out since they're going to be taking a while. Anyway, if you sat through all of that, thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed the design and uh, the sort of background information on the region and I hope it that gets you really excited to see what else happens soon. And see you guys next time!